All right, water hose working good. Flashlight. Looks like that bad boy's in all in order. Lightning drill. Let's check this bad boy. I'll see if this is still working. Perfect. All right, drill. Change this out real quick. It's on fire, baby. It's good. Looks like it's all in order, man. Let's put this stuff away. This boy getting on my last nut. Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? Time for another tutorial from Pinnacle Studio Pro. All right guys, with this one, I'm taking y'all back. I'm taking y'all way back with this one. A long time ago, well, maybe not too long ago, I made a little film, a little short, it's not even really a film. Just made a little demo called Crazy Tools. Used a few, you know, add-ons from Digital Juice Compositors Toolkit, and I had a lot of people asking me, requesting me, begging me to do a toot on how I did it. So today, I'm bringing that to you, okay? I'm bringing you the toot you all ask for. Now, you can use this toot and use this for a Digital Juice Compositors Toolkit. You can use it for Action Essential Files. You can use it for files from Dead Nation Films. You can use it for files from anywhere, really. It's a great tutorial for you to add a little extra spice to your video for any type of effects like smoke, fire, missiles, uh, muzzle flashes, things like that. Anything that you want to add to your video that Pinnacle Studio 16 doesn't already have in it. So sit back, relax, unwind, and enjoy. So here we are in Pinnacle Studio 16. Or as some of you might call it, Avid Studio 2.0, for those of you in the know. But anyway, let's move on. As you can see, I have a clip down in the timeline. And what I need to do first is I need to determine where I'm going to go ahead and put the effects. And I'm going to split the clips where I want to put the effects. It'll make it easier for me to put them there. Now, if you're doing something like I'm doing, like with the tool or something like that, or you're shooting a, a gun for a mother flash or something, then you want to go ahead and make sure that you position your playhead or the scrubber at least uh, one or two keyframes before the individual pulls the trigger or does the action that they're going to do. And I put a timeline markers here for all of my stuff. And then you want to split your clip there. And then you want to go ahead and put a split about two to three frames after the individual let's go with the trigger if you're doing a tool thing if you're doing like a muzzle flare you don't need to do an extra one it's just going to be so fast so for this i went about two to three keyframes out and i'm splitting the clip here as well and i did the same thing for the fire so i'm just going to split my clips in these two positions i'm not going to show you all the different things i did in a crazy tool because there's no need for it all you need to do is know really how to get it done so let's do this so i'm using a clip from compositors tool kit one from digital juice shout out to the people at digital juice y'all put great product out there really inexpensive love your stuff so i'm going to drag this into position where i want it to be and you may need to you know do some additional cut trimming of your video clip depending on when the fire starts when it ends whatever i've already done that to this clip so no need to show you that. I'm pretty sure you go, you guys know how to trim a video clip. If you don't, I feel for you. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to go to open effects editor. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and change this to show media and tracks below. I'm going to move the playhead somewhere near where I could tell there's more fire on the screen than there was initially. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to keyers. Now, because this has a black background, I'm going to use a Luma keyer. If you're using something with the green background, maybe some of the free stuff that comes from detonationfilms.com, you could use the uh, chroma keyer. I'm going to use the Luma keyer for this. So 
So I'm going to click on Luma Kier. And I'm going to go to settings. Now that I have the file on the screen, you can see I don't really like all of this orangey googly gook back there. It doesn't look real. It makes it look fake. I'm going to get rid of that crud. So I'm going to move my Luma Center. I'm going to move it up to about 80 some odd points on here to get rid of all of the fake crap and bring out the real real. I could also change up the radius if I wanted to bring it down a little bit more realistic here. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, I need to move the fire into position. Now, there's a few different ways you go about doing that. In the 2D, 3D, you could use a 2D Editor Advanced or a 3D Editor GPU. It really just depends on what you want to do with your effect. Now, with the 3D, you have a lot of options, like you have uh, X axis, Y, and you can move it in a lot of different ways in a lot of different planes so that if you're positioned in a specific way, pointing towards the screen, pointing at an angle, you can move your effect to make it match the angle that you're at. But since I'm just like straight across, I'm good with 2D Editor Advanced, so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna change it to no preset. I'm gonna go to rotation first, and I'm going to change it to negative 90, because that will point it in the direction I need it. Now for size, I'm gonna bring it way down, because I need to make it look like it's really coming out of the tool and then for position I need to move it over and I need to move it down into position and as you can see it's a little bit off there so let's move this out some That looks a lot better right there. So of course, I'm gonna click okay here. Of course, if you want to be more precise with this, because of course right now I'm just doing a tutorial for you guys to see, I'm not really getting very precise, but what you can do, stretch out your timeline. Put your cursor down here at the bottom of the timeline and stretch it out so you can see each and every keyframe and make sure that you have the fire at the, the right position, the right length. You could bring it all the way back here if you wanted to. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I want a little bit of fire still on the screen when I'm done. I want it to look a little more realistic like the fire is going away. Because usually when you turn off fire, it just don't disappear. I mean, it fades. So I'm going to fade the fire out. And I'm going to bring a fade all the way back here. All you need to do is position your cursor right here until you see it start to fade on its own. Hold your left click button down on your mouse. Drag it back. Now we've got a nice little fade. And it'll look like... When I let go, the fire is actually going away when I play it. So that's that part. Next thing I need to do is go ahead and show you guys how to do the flashlight. This is an add-in that comes with Pinnacle Studio 16. It's a no light factory. So I'm going to right click on this part of the clip where I did my splits and I'm going to go to open effects editor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add-ons and Red Giant Motion Graphics Toolkit. Then I'm gonna go to No Light Factory. Now, if you have a big lock or keypad on the freaking screen, then that means that the freaking program when it uploaded didn't really give you the full access that you need to Red Giant No. That's a known error, and if you utilize the address at the top of the screen that I am adding to it right now and go to that location on the website and you will be able to follow the instructions to take that stupid lock off of Red Giant No. And you'll be able to use it freely. Beautiful. But anyway, I'm going to go here to the presets and I'm going to choose Sunset. I'm going to click on Controls. First thing I'm going to do is bring the brightness down so I can get a better idea of where this old dot is at. And also, I want it to like kind of come onto the screen very lightly as if 
I just turn on the light. But I need to get this over into the right position. So I will move the light source over to the right. And I will lose, move the light source down. Until it is right in front of the flashlight. That looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable keyframes because I need to move this light across the screen. So I'm going to click on enable keyframes. And now you see my keyframe options are available to me. I'm going to move the playhead all the way to the end. And now I'm going to move the light source to where I want it to end at. This will create a keyframe at the end automatically because I'm changing the settings. So I'm going to move this over. I'm going to move it down some more. And try to line it up so it looks like it's coming straight out of the light. Be a little bit lower than that. That looks pretty good. Maybe even a little bit lower. Beautiful. Now, I want the light to also shoot down. Like you saw in the video that the light went up and it went down. So I'm going to leave it at the same perspective. But now I'm going to go back and try to get the light to a point where it's near the middle of the screen. First try looked pretty good. So now what I need to do is I'll move the controls again and it will create a new keyframe here. So I'm going to move the brightness up to 100. And I'm going to move my scale up to two. Really make it dynamic. Now what will happen is the first keyframe starts small so it's going to go up to the size of the middle keyframe which is big and then once it gets past there it's going to go down to the size of the small keyframe which makes the light once again also travel across the screen beautiful click ok and that is as they call it a wrap you're done so remember this can be used with any type of um effects that you want to add to Pinnacle Studio as long as it has a uh, background color behind it. It doesn't really even matter what background it is. It could be green, blue, red, orange, purple. As long as you know how to use the, the uh, chroma key here correctly with the uh, eyedrop tool, you can make any color behind an effect disappear off the screen. So you can use this with the uh, Digital Juice Compositors Toolkit, Action Essentials from Video Copilot, or DetonationFilms.com. Shout out to all three of those companies for giving us great content for our videos. Now, you know what to do. You know the routine. The thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it, hug it. If you like the content in this video and you want other people to know that it is great content that they should be watching, click the thumb. All right? It'll help other people out. Also, Leave me your comments. Let me know. As a matter of fact, where do you get your effects from? Where do you get your smoke, fire, electricity, uh, water, all type of effects that you add to Pinnacle Studio? Where are you getting them from? Let other people know. Share that stuff with them. Also, if you need help, you can give me a comment too. If I can't help you, I'll point you in the right direction and get you the help you need. And last, but definitely not least, don't you ever forget to subscribe thanks for watching we'll see you again soon hey you don't forget to watch these other videos they're going to help you out a lot when you're adding different effects to pinnacle studio 16 whether it's smoke fire electricity explosion muzzle flashes it'll help you watch these videos watch these videos Watch these videos. Watch them.